Hi dear students welcome you to way to success now let's start with class 9th civics chapter that will provide you a clear picture of what is democracy and why we need democracy now let's start where did the word democracy comes from the word democracy comes from a greek word demokratia in greek demos means people and kratia means rule so democracy is ruled by the people according to abraham lincoln democracy is government of the people by the people and for the people how to define democracy democracy is a form of government in which the rulers are elected by the people Let's see what are the features of democracy. The simple definition of democracy gives rise to various questions such as who are the rulers, what kind of election, who are the people, and what kind of a form of government. Let's consider each of these questions with the help of some examples. The first point is major decisions by elected leaders. Some countries like Pakistan do not follow this rule. In Pakistan, people formally have elected parliament and government, but the real power is with those who is not elected by the people. General Parvez Musharraf led a military coup in October 1999. He overthrew the democratically elected government. He declared himself the chief executive of the country later he changed his position to president in 2002 he held a referendum that allowed musharraf to continue as president for another 5 years media and human rights organizations said that referendum was based on malpractices and fraud In August 2002 he issued legal framework order that amended the constitution of Pakistan According to this order the president can dismiss the national and provincial assemblies The work of civilian cabinet is supervised by national security council dominated by military officers After passing this law the election held to the national and state assemblies the elected representatives have some powers but the final power rests with military officers and general musharraf hence we can conclude it was not a democratic country the same thing happens in many dictatorships and monarchies A dictatorship is a government ruled by one person or commander. A country is ruled by kings and queens in monarchy. This gives us the first feature. In a democracy, the final decision-making power must rest with those elected by the people. The next point is free and fair electoral competition. Let's take China as an example. In China elections are regularly held after every 5 years for electing the country's parliament called National People's Congress The National People's Congress has the power to appoint the president of the country It has nearly 3000 members elected from all over China Some members are elected by the army Before contesting elections A candidate needs the approval of the Chinese Communist Party. In China, the government is always formed by the Communist Party. Next, let's look at the situation in Mexico. Since its independence in 1930, Mexico holds elections after every 6 years to elect its president. But until 2000, Every election was won by a party called PRI that is Institutional Revolutionary Party 
the PRI used many dirty tricks to win the election. All those who employed in government offices had to attend its party meetings. Teachers of government school forced parents to watch PRI. Media ignored the activities of opposition parties except to criticize them. Sometimes the polling booths were shifted from one place to another place in the last minutes, which made difficult to the people cast their votes. The PRI spent a large sum of money in the campaigns for its candidates. In both the examples, elections are held, but no one can claim that they are free and fair. We can thus add a second feature of democracy. Democracy must be based on a free and fair election, where those currently in power have a fair chance of losing. Next point is one person, one vote, one value. Democracy is based on a fundamental principle of political equality. However, there are many instances of denial of the equal right to vote. For example, Saudi Arabia, Estonia and Fiji. Until 2015, in Saudi Arabia, women didn't have the right to vote. Estonia has made its citizenship rules. People belonging to the Russian minority found it difficult to get the right to vote. In Fiji, the vote of an indigenous Fiji has more value than that of an Indian Fijian. In a democracy, each adult citizen must have one vote and each vote must have one value. Rules of Law and Respect for Rights Rule of law means every individual in a democracy should abide by the law or a constitution which is made. It also includes that no person would violate the laws. Respect for rights means that every citizen of a democratic state is provided with some important rights and it is a duty of everybody to respect each other's rights. We can understand it with the example of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe attained independence from white minority rule in 1980. Then, the country has been ruled by the party that led the freedom struggle, ZANU-PF. Its leader, Robert Mugabe, ruled the country since independence. Elections have been held regularly and it was always won by ZANU-PF. President Mugabe was popular, but he also used unfair practices in elections. He changed the constitution and increased the power of president. There was a law that limited the right to criticize the president. Television and radio were controlled by the government and gave only the ruling party's version. He was forced out of office in 2017. The example of Zimbabwe shows that Zimbabwe is not following a democratic government. Everyone should be equal in the eyes of law. These rights must be protected by an independent judiciary. It is important for a democratic government to grant basic rights and freedom to its citizens. Here is the fourth and final feature of democracy. A democratic government rules within limits set by constitutional law and citizens' rights. Let's look again at the four features of democracy. They are Rulers elected by the people take all the major decisions. Elections offer a choice and fair opportunity to the people to change the current rulers. This choice and opportunity is available to all the people on an equal basis. The exercise of this choice leads to a government limited by basic rules of the constitution 
and citizens' rights. Now, we can make a comparison between the common features of democratic government and non-democratic government. In democratic government, people have political rights. They can participate in election process. There are free and fair election. Democratic government is accountable and responsive to the needs of the people. Citizens have the right to oppose policy and action made by the government. In democratic government, rulers remain in power for a specific period of time. But in non-democratic government, people don't enjoy political rights. Elections are not held in free and fair manner. Non-democratic government is not accountable to the people and less responsive to the needs of the people. No criticism of government or ruler tolerated in non-democratic government. Rulers remain in power for a long time, even for life. Why democracy? Is it good or bad? There are many arguments that oppose and support democracy. First, let's look at the arguments against democracy. Democracy creates instability by changing its leaders frequently. Democracy is about power play and political competition. There is no scope for morality. So many people have to be consulted before any issue is solved. It leads to delay. Elected leaders do not know the best interests of the people. It leads to corruption for it is based on electoral corruption. Ordinary people don't know what is good for them. They should not decide anything. Then, let's see the arguments which support democracy. A democratic government is a better government because it is a more accountable form of government. We can understand this point from the example of China. China suffered from one of the worst famine in 1958 to 1961. Nearly three core people died in the famine. No major famine occurred in India at that time. According to economists, it was the result of democratic system in India. Democracy in India made the government respond to food scarcity. It was because India has a multi-party system and free press. The government may be criticized and even lost the next elections. This is not the case with the Chinese government. Because China is ruled by the Communist Party and no one can criticize the government. So we can say, Democracy is better than any other form of government in responding to the needs of the people. Next point is, democracy improves the quality of decision making. Why democracy should lead to better decisions than any non-democratic government? Because democracy is based on consultation and discussion. A democratic decision always involves many people and they are able to point out possible mistakes in any decision. The advantage is that it reduces the chance of irresponsible decisions. Next point is democracy provides a method to deal with differences and conflicts. In any society which has social diversity, people are bound to have different opinions. People belong to different regions, speak different languages, practice different religions, and have different castes. The preferences of one group can clash with those of other groups. How do we resolve such a conflict? 
Here, democracy provides the only peaceful solution to this problem. In a democracy, no one is a permanent winner or loser. Different groups can live with one another peacefully. The strongest argument for democracy is about what democracy does to the citizens. Here, democracy enhances the dignity of citizens. Democracy is based on the principle of political equality. It provides equal political rights to all the citizens without any discrimination. The poorest and the least educated have the same status as the rich and the educated. Finally, democracy is better than other forms of government because it allows us to correct its own mistakes. There is no guarantee that mistakes cannot be made in democracy. No form of government can guarantee that. The advantage in a democracy is that such mistakes cannot be hidden for long. There is a space for public discussions on these mistakes. There is a room for correction. Either the rulers have to change their decisions or the rulers can be changed by the people. Once again, let's point out the arguments in favor of democracy and the arguments against democracy. The arguments in favor of democracy includes democratic form of government is accountable, it improves the quality of decision making, it provides a method to deal with differences and conflicts, it enhances the dignity of citizen. It allows us to correct our mistakes. Then, the arguments against democracy are Change of leaders leads to instability. It involves only political competition with no scope for morality. Consulting more people leads to delays. It leads to corruption. And ordinary people don't know that. What is good for them? Democracy may not be the solution to all problems, but it offers more dignity to all citizens. That is why democracy is considered the best form of government. Broader meaning of democracy We have understood democracy as a form of government. There are two kinds of democracy. First one, direct democracy, and second one, representative or indirect democracy. In direct democracy, the citizens directly participate in decision making process. In representative or indirect democracy, people elect their representatives and those elected representatives take decisions. Representative democracy is the most common form of democracy in modern world. Representative democracy means the majority of people rule through their elected representatives. A representative democracy becomes necessary. Why? Modern democracies comprise a large number of people. It is physically impossible for them to sit or collect together at a place and take a collective decision. Even if they could collect together, all the citizens do not have the time, the desire or the skill to take part in all the decisions. This gives us a clear but minimal understanding of democracy. This clarity helps us to distinguish democracies from non-democracies. In democratic countries, all people do not rule. Elections are held to choose the representatives and citizens are allowed to participate in elections. A majority is allowed to take decisions on behalf of all the people 
through their elected representatives. Democracy can be applied to any sphere of life. What is an ideal standard democracy? True democracy will come to a country only when no one goes hungry to bed. In a true democracy, every citizen should be able to play equal role in decision making. For this, a citizen not only needs an equal right to vote, but also needs to have equal information, basic education, equal resources, and a lot of commitment. The most common form of democracy in today's world is being ruled through people's elected representatives. However, for a small country, there can be other ways of making democratic decisions. All people can sit together and make decisions directly. This is how the Gram Sabha should work in a village. Democracy depends on active political participation by all the citizens. Dear students, let's conclude this chapter that democracy is the best form of government. I hope you understand today's session. You can subscribe to our channel for more updates. Thank you and have a nice day.